flowers to fruits. These apples are delicious, Adil. You are right, Lima. Do you know this apple was once a flower? A flower? Yes, Adil. In many trees, the flower changes into a fruit. My mother is a scientist. Let us ask her about this process. Mom, can you tell us how flowers change into fruits? Sure, children. But in order to understand this process, let us first understand the structure of a flower. A typical flower has a stalk called a pedicel. The pedicel joins the flower to the stem. The different parts of a flower are arranged in rings or whorls. The outermost whorl consists of green leaf-like structures called sepals. Next to the sepals are the petals. Now, if we remove the petals, we can see the stamens. A stamen is the male part of a flower. Each stamen consists of a bag-like head called the anther. The anther contains fine dust-like particles called pollen grains. In the center of the flower, there is a flask-shaped structure called the pistil or carpel. This is the female part of the flower. The base of the pistil contains the ovary. The short tube-like upper part is the style and above it is the stigma. The stigma receives the pollen grains from the anther. Mom, how does the stigma receive the pollen grains? Sometimes, when an insect sits on one flower to suck the nectar out of it, pollen grains from that flower stick to its body. And when it visits another flower of the same kind, the pollen grains stuck to its body transfer to the stigma of that flower. Similarly, wind and water also help in transferring pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of the same flower or of another flower of the same kind. This process is known as pollination. Auntie. What happens after the process of pollination? After pollination, the ovary swells up and changes into a fruit. And this is how a flower changes into a fruit. Thanks, Mom. Thank you, Auntie, for sharing with us this important information. I never knew that small insects, such as the honeybee, can be a part of such an important process. You are welcome, children. And yes, all living organisms are interdependent on one another. We should always treat other living organisms, be it humans or animals, with respect. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.